Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking about the law of sines. I have this video for the law of sines and then I have a different video for the law of cosines. So if that's what you need, make sure to check out the other video. So the law of sines is a really interesting um, situation that we can use when we're trying to find a missing side of a triangle or a missing angle of a triangle. And we haven't been able to use any of the things that we've been maybe um, able to do up until this point. Like if I gave you two angles of a triangle, you could easily find the third because you would just add up those two angles, subtract from 180. But what if I gave you just one angle in a triangle and it wasn't a right triangle, it was just one of the angles in a triangle and I gave you two side lengths? Could you find one of the other angles? Law of sines is going to let you do that, things like that. So, um, you know, previously we learned all this true ratios that we could set up but those all work for right triangles. So now we're gonna be able to use what's called the law of sines to figure out side lengths of a triangle and also find angles of a triangle that is not a right triangle. So it says, if you know the measures of two angles and any side, you can calculate the other sides using the law of sines. So here it's saying, if I know two sides of a triangle and I know one of the angles of a triangle, I'm gonna be able to figure out what the other um, side could possibly be. And this is what the law of sines look, looks like. So the sine of A, this angle here, if I set up the sine of this angle A over the opposite side A, that's going to be equal to the sine of angle B over side B, which is also equal to sine C over side C. Now, of course, you wouldn't set up all of this, but what you, what you would do is you would set up maybe two of these uh, ratios equal to each other, and maybe you end up setting up you end up setting up a proportion in this form. So, for example, if I told you that sine a, let's say, was seventy, okay, I told you that a was seventy, you might say, okay, seventy, and I told you side a is four, you would do sine seventy over four is equal to sine b. Let's say I told you b was eighty nine. So you would do sine B, so sine of 89, over B. Let's say I wanted you to just solve for side B. Well, you would set up this proportion of sine over sine of the angle over the opposite side is equal to sine of the angle over the opposite side. Use your cross products to solve, and you have your answer. Okay, guys, so let's take a look at this triangle ABC. And what I want to do is I want to solve for the triangle. And anytime you see solve for a triangle, what it means and what it's asking you to do is find any missing angles and find any missing sides. So basically have the triangle completely labeled. So here right now, I do see I have two angles. I have one side marked up. I need to find side, um, side A. I need to find side C. And I need to find angle C. And you can see I have these three sections here. Now, if you look at this and you're like, hey, finding angle C, I actually don't have to use any special formula. I can simply just add up 45 and 72, get 117, and then do 180 minus 117 and get 63. So, okay, awesome. So I know that this angle C is 63. But now I need to find these sides. I need to find side A and side C. Here is what I know. I know that angle A is across from side A. Okay, so 45 degrees is across from A. I also have this relationship of angle 72, angle B, is across from 12. So once you have something that you can compare, angle B to side B, you have those two values, here's the proportion that you can set up. You can say sine of 72 over 12 is equal to the sine of 45 over A. So you need one complete ratio to then set equal to the other ratio of the missing value. I wouldn't say, you know, sine of 63 over C is equal to sine 45 over A, because then I have two missing values. So whatever you see for a fact, and I'm going to put a loop around this, I have this relationship, and so notice that's the relationship that's here. Now I'm going to do my cross products, so A times sine 72 is equal to 12 times sine 45. We would then divide both sides by sine 72. That way we just get A by itself. And then this just really becomes calculator work. So I'm gonna type it into my um, calculator here on my screen so you can see exactly what this would look like. 
if you're using a graphing calculator, you're going to be able to type this in so smoothly. So 12 times to do sine 45, I'm going to type in 45 sine, press enter. So that's my result for my numerator. Then I'm going to divide it by sine 72. So I'm going to type in 72 sine, enter, and round it to the tenths place or the hundredths place. I'm either going to write 8.9 or 8.92. I wrote 8.9. Okay, so if you did not get 8.9, you're going to definitely want to make sure you take another look at that and retype it into your calculator. So now for side C, I can basically use the same ratio of sine 72 over 12 is equal to now sine 63 over C. I'm going to cross multiply. So C times um, sine 72 is equal to 12 times sine 63. It doesn't matter what order you put it in. I need to solve for C, so I'm going to divide both sides by sine 72. And so now to type in this problem here, let me clear my calculator out. So this is what I'm typing in. So 12 times sine 63, so I'm typing in 63 sine, press enter, divided by 72 sine, enter, and I get 11 point. Two. Okay, so now I have done what's called solve the triangle. I found all the missing angles and sides that I could have needed to do. Let's take a look at another problem. So here I'm asking to find the measure of angle E. Then I need to find side E and side F. And I put them in this order for whatever reason, just because that's the way I was solving it, I guess. Now, of course, angle E, we can just add up the two angles that we're given, subtract that amount from 180, and it's not very difficult to figure out that E is 64. Okay, and now I want to take a ratio that I know for sure. So look at what I know for sure. I have angle D and side D. So this ratio is going to be like the golden ratio I really want to use. So let's say I wanted to solve for sine F first. I could solve for E either. It doesn't matter. I'm going to say sine of 73 over 8 is equal to, uh, so I want to solve for F, so sine of 41 over F. Cross multiply, so 8 times sine 41 is equal to F times sine 73. Divide both sides by sine 73. And so when I go to type this into my calculator, I'm doing 8 times sine 41. So 41 sine, press enter, divided by 73 sine, press enter, and I get 5.48 or 5.5 if I'm rounding to the tenths place. And now side E. So again, I'm going to use that same ratio. I might as well is equal to sine 64, so we needed this part of this problem in order to do this one, um, over E. So if I did this, I would then be able to say, okay, well, E times sine 73 is equal to 8 times sine 64. I need to solve for E, so I'm going to divide both sides by sine 73. And now in my calculator, I'm going to go ahead and do 8 times sine 64, so 64 sine, press enter, divided by 73 sine, enter, and I get 7.5, rounded to the tenths place. Okay, excellent. Now part two for law of sines. So law of sines is also going to let us find missing angles. So it says here, if you know two, if you know the measures of two sides and one opposite angle, you can calculate the other angles using the law of sines. And, of course, we're using the same exact ratio, but instead of solving for a, a side, we're going to be solving for an angle. And so you have to remember, hey, what happened with our trig ratios when we were solving for missing angle? We had to use those inverse, uh, inverse ratios. So that's what's going to happen. Okay, so let's take a look. I want to find the measure of angle C. I want to find the measure of angle B. And I would need to find side C. And so here I have a leg of 10, I'm sorry, not a leg, just a side of 10, and I have a side of 12. So right now, I definitely have this relationship. 
I definitely have the relationship of A being 53 degrees and side A being 10. Um, measure of angle C, I don't know the side C yet, so I can't really do that just yet, but I can figure out the measure of angle B. So I can say, okay, the measure of angle B over 12 is equal to sine 53 over 10. And it doesn't matter how, if I said sine 53 over 10 is equal to sine B over 12, it's the same thing. Let's do our cross products. Okay, so we have 12 sine 53 equals 10 sine B. We then want to divide both sides by 10. And so when we do that, we're left with sine B equals 12 sine 53 over 10. But to find the angle, we have to use the inverse sine function. And you can see it, I have it as um, 73.4, but let me show you. So we cross product, we divide both sides by 10. And now sine B is equal to this, so therefore the measure of angle B, okay, I can fill that in in front, the measure of angle B is equal to the inverse sine of this entire ratio here. So I need to type in my ratio, so 12 times 53 sine, enter, divided by 10, I get this ratio. Now I need to do my inverse sine function. So I'm going to go up, grab my inverse sine, and you can see that's where we get the 73.4. Okay. Um, so a few careful steps we have to do. But again, once you get your fraction, you're not just typing it in the calculator. You have to use the inverse function to be able to figure out that angle. Okay. So now we know that the measure of angle B is 73.4. And now if I wanted to find side C, I could say, okay, well, sine 53 over 10 is equal to sine um, 53.6 over C, or I could set up sine 73.4 over 12. Now, where did I get 53.6 from for angle C? I got it from simply adding up the 50 degrees and the 73.4 degrees, subtracting it from 180, and figuring out that the measure, what the measure of angle C was, right? So if you find the second angle of a triangle, you can easily find the third. You can use that as a ratio. You could have also used the ratio of, again, sine uh, 73.4 over 12, and get, you're going to get the same final answer. We're going to use our cross products here. So C times sine 53 equals 10 times sine 53.6. We're going to divide both sides by sine uh, 53. And again, to solve for angle, uh, to solve for side C now, um, we don't have to use the inverse function. We only use the inverse when we're finding the angles. So now I'm going to be able to type this in and say, okay, 10 times 53.6 uh, sine, enter, divided by 53 sine equals, and I get this 10.078 or just 10.08, depending on where you're rounding. Okay, and the last one here. So I want to find the measure of angle D. I want to find the measure of angle F. And I need to find side D. So right now I can't find angle D um, just yet, unless I do set up a ratio. Um, I could solve for D or F setting up using my law of signs here. It looks like I set up, I found D just by subtracting afterwards. So let's look at the measure of angle F. I do have this ratio that I know. Okay, so if I wanted to solve for F, and angle F is across from 15, so sine 88 over 20 is equal to sine F over 15. Let's do our cross products. So 15 sine 88 is equal to 20 times sine F. Divide both sides by 20. And so now remember to find the measure of angle F. What we have to do is we have to take this ratio here and apply it to the inverse sine function. So we're going to say the inverse sine of 15 sine 88 divided by 20. So now let me type that in. So 15 times 88 sine, press enter, divided by 20, press enter and then inverse sine, and I get 48.55.
um, which I rounded to 48.6. Okay, so now if I know that that angle is 48.6, I could add it with the 88 and subtract from 180 in order to find angle D, or I could set up the same kind of ratio, I'm gonna get the same answer. And then for side D, I would then use the same ratio I could do that, sine 88 over 20 is equal to angle D I know is 43.4, so sine 43.4 over D, use my cross products, divide both sides by sine 88, and when I go to type this in now, okay, so 20 times sine 43.4 sine, enter, divided by 88 sine, enter, I get 13.75 or 13.8. I know there's a lot going on in this video. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.